we welcome you to this informative interactive show by uh, dr ritu santwani the pundit show uh, supported by inov care life sciences private limited uh, myself uh, swami sankalp sani associate marketing manager at marketing department welcome dr ritu santwani and dr shivani sajdev go so we have today uh, both the eminent speakers with us on the panel of inov care life sciences and we are very grateful and thankful to dr ritu santwani to have uh, both the eminent speakers on our platform today so about our in, uh, organization initial limited we are engaged in marketing specialized innovative products across all the countries in the world of in the field of infertility as well as in gynecological care to begin the session first we would like to introduce our eminent speaker dr ritu santwani dr ritu is specialized in ivf infertility test to baby dr is a director at pune test to baby center uh, dr has 20 years of experience in obs and gynec service and doctor is having expertise in the field of iui icsi and ivf assisted hitching uh, egg embryo uh, donation surrogate mother as well as male infertility semen banking embryo freezing doctor is having specialized in uh, sexual and psychological problems and helping those patients uh, so this is the introduction of dr ritu santwani and uh, uh, let me introduce our uh, next speaker dr shivani sachdev gore Uh, about Dr. Shivan Sachdev Gaur, Dr. is MD, DNB, MRCOG, UK. Dr. is a director of Science Healthcare, founder, secretary of Delhi State Chapter of ISAR. Dr. is a secretary at Delhi State Chapter of ISPAT, and general secretary of INS STAR. Dr. is ex vice president of Delhi Gynec Forum South. Dr. is ex IMA executive member of South Delhi. So today we have both the eminent speakers uh, with us. and it's our pleasure to have both the doctors on the platform today for the show of the uh, pundit today hosted by dr ritu santwani so doctor over to you uh, thank you so much dr uh, ritu as well as dr shivani over to you doctor thank, thank you so much sankalp and thank you you know okay sciences for constant your support so friends so without wasting time so this is our fourth show so i am very glad to invite my very very dear friend dr shivani sachdev gaur who doesn't know dr shivani sachdev gaur the queen of surrogacy the pride of india and i can proudly say a very very dear friend of mine so friends i am getting a very amazing fantastic response for my this show it is praised by all all of the seniors and dr fraternity so what i say before i will start this show in this show actually i interview the people whom i admire from whom i learned so actually the basic principle in what i believe that knowledge is always increases by sharing so friends so let's begin with our uh, very special pundit dr shivani huh? at your very own the pundit at your very own dr ritu show so dr shivani with your permission let's begin this happy virtual hour thank you very much and over care and dr ritu my dear dear friend for this wonderful program today let's start yeah thank you so friends as today we have selected the topic in which my friend dr shivani is my master so thank we you. are yeah yeah most welcome so we are going to discuss regarding this fertility after 40 so friends as these days we are getting lot and lot of patients coming to our opd that they want to start their uh, fertility cycle after the 40s all are busy in their career orientation or some other work so dr shivani i want to uh, know your opinion once these kind of patients are coming to your opd so what are the first line investigations you are advising to your patients See, after the age of forty, it is advisable that you should consult your gynecologist or your fertility specialist if you are planning a pregnancy, because we know that the chance of having a successful pregnancy naturally drops to almost five percent per cycle, and even with IVF, the success rate is in the region of anywhere between seven to nine percent. So the first step that we advise is test the male partner and the female partner. in the female partner primarily we are concerned about her ovarian reserve 
So I would do an ultrasound scan to look at the anterior follicle count. The best time to do the scan is actually between day two to day five of the menstrual cycle, so that you don't have any ovarian cysts which can uh, impair your observation of the scan. And anti-mullerian hormone, which can be done at any time, and FSH, LH, and estradiol on day two to day five again of the cycle. The second test is an assessment of the uh, uterine morphology. So uh, it can be done on ultrasound, or you can, if you have the facility, a special uh, 3D ultrasound to check for fibroids, polyps, or any other uh, problems in the uterine cavity. The third test would be a test of the fallopian tube by an HSG or SSG. And the last would be a semen analysis which is the cornerstone of the treatment. And it is absolutely mandatory that we should not ignore and this should be done. These are the basic four. If you're going to do basic tests, this is the four basic tests which should be done. And uh, if the woman is younger, you can wait before doing some of the tests. But after the age of 40, uh, if it was you in her position, you would not want to uh, waste any time because you would not want to lose that chance with your own eggs to get a pregnancy. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Shivani. But these days we are getting some patients in our OPD that those are saying, ma'am, though I am 38 or 42, yesterday only got one patient, she is 42 years. She told me, ma'am, abhi to meri shadi hui hai, only three months back. Huh? So is it not like that? Can I try naturally? You can do the investigations. And after that, can you allow me for the natural, for the natural, uh, uh, pregnancy or we have to emphasize over this ART procedures? Oh, no. Uh, I mean, there are some people who are very keen to conceive naturally and it is not that natural conception is impossible. Certainly, yeah. it can be possible. So, we will definitely tell them that although your chances are not very high, but you can conceive naturally. And you know, uh, in preparing for this seminar, I did a lot of reading and what I found was BMI. BMI seems to be one of the most important criteria. If age is number one, BMI is number two to predict the chance of pregnancy. So this is like a golden opportunity for them. When they're trying to get pregnant naturally, use it to lose weight, eat healthy, take preconception, folic acid. I even give DHEA because, you know, the Poseidon oh. group came up with so many criteria. Even the Delphi consensus, you get controversy about it. But in general, I am prescribing DHEA or antioxidants to boost the oocyte quality. So definitely she can try naturally. She can use it as an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Very good tip. Because especially in this lock, now the lockdown is still open, but in this still unlock phase one also, still there are some restrictions. So this is a golden opportunity, as you correctly said. Dr. Shivani, as you have mentioned regarding this AMH also, so we are seeing very frequently that low AMH is very common. So, uh, what treatment you advise? D DHEA already you have mentioned. So, what other treatment you advise for increasing this ov ovarian AMH? So, you should understand that AMH is something which is an age-related concept. So, oh. it is not an isolation. At the age of 40, you will not expect an AMH at the age of 20. So, sure. probably her AMH is age-appropriate for her. So, even if it is low, it might. it's not that it is not appropriate. But what we can do is that we can increase the pool of competent two sites. And for that, we can give supplements like antioxidants, coenzyme Q, uh, DHEA, along with that, even androgel, which is available now in a gel form. Earlier, we used to have that 75 milligram. It was very oh. messy. Now we have that like a Vaseline mm -hmm. bottle. So you can just inject one squirt is 25 milligram per day. Along with that, some ovulation induction agent, for example, clomiphene, citrate, or letrozole. And remember, if the male partner sperm also has uh, oligoesthenoteratospermia, it is not always the female. It could be the male factor also, which is leading to the infertility. So we must give some antioxidant supplements to the male partner and test his sperm as well. True, true. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So, what do you think? What's the role regarding this? Of uh, Before I switch to this other question, I want to ask you, you are doing a lot of work on the stem cells also. So, anything you can highlight in us for this ovarian rejuvenation stem cell? Yes. So, yeah. for stem cells, I think you are also doing a lot of work on stem cells as far oh. as I know. So, we are using uh, both PRP and also autologous stem cells. 
and when we are talking about stem cells the most important thing that we should understand is that this treatment is still in the research phase so we cannot uh, like we have to give a very honest uh, opinion to the patient that this is a research based treatment and uh, there are uh, scattered reports of people benefiting you may or may not benefit and the source of the stem cells can be um, from the bone marrow from the adipose tissue or from the blood what we are doing is from the bone marrow so it is taken like a needle like you take from the vein we are putting it in the hip and collecting the blood from the bone marrow then we have a special uh, machine in which it is centrifuged where the stem cells are prepared these cells can be injected into the ovary by transvaginal injection it can also be done in laparoscopy or it can be injected into the ovarian vessels by interventional radiology and after this generally it takes about 3 months so uh, i am uh, while i was reading there are a lot of papers which are published human reproduction 2015 human reproduction update 2015 that is artificial gametes for uh, biological progress to clinical application for uh, women who have poor ovarian reserve what they do is that they increase the follicular development they increase vascularization development of stroma they reduce the apoptosis reduce the atresia so basically they increase the micro environment around the egg which gives you more competent oocyte so that you have a higher chance of conceiving and getting pregnant now um the first time that actually a uh, success was achieved was there is no um, there are no uh, confirmed reports but it was apparently for somebody who had the uh, cancer therapy and then irradiation and premature ovarian failure and then had stem cell transplantation is another paper published in which along with stem cells they also put uh, some uh, growth factor so they put actually mesenchymal stem cells like it is a matrix in which the stem cells are grown and that is supposed to be more potent than just the um the stem cells itself which are derived from the bone marrow so this is a very clear and honest discussion with the patient that this is an experimental procedure it is still in research and you may or may not benefit by it true yeah thank you so much dr shivani can you enlighten us is it any role of this genetic testing also Yes. If the patient is coming for this age at forty, so do we have to advise some genetic testing also? Actually, Dr. Shivani, I want to share something because once I uh, promoted this program that we are inviting our queen in this program for this, so I got lot of many questions. So I have compiled up some of the questions and asking you so that everybody can be benefited. So yeah, please Thank enlighten. You. Yeah thank yeah. you that is really kind so yeah. what we are using here is called as a pgt or implantation genetic testing a for aneuploidy and there are a lot of papers again which have been published on this a large randomized control trial has shown that if you transfer pgt a tested embryo the miscarriage rate i mean it was really amazing but this was an rct where they reduced it to 2% versus 39% without doing uh, pgt testing and the live birth rate that they caught for pgt testing was 52% versus only 20 25% without testing so definitely there are certain studies where pgt a seems to improve the uh, pregnancy rates and reduce the miscarriage rates and but however in literature again there are other studies which say that pgt a may not pick up all the anomalies and in spite of that the pregnancy rate does not improve significantly as far as i am concerned in my personal practice i will definitely advise if they are able to afford to go ahead with pgt a because this is something which is very emotionally hard also if you find that your child has anomalies and then to undergo a miscarriage it is definitely worthwhile doing a genetic testing and confirming before we do an embryo transfer yeah thank you so much dr shivani yeah this is very correct because most of the patients are too much worried at the age of the 40 for the regarding the risk of this down syndrome and repeated miscarriages so i think this is a very very valid point so now dr shivani i am coming the topic which is very dear and close to your heart for regarding the surrogacy so uh, can you enlighten us what are the current uh, status of the surrogacy in india and how many types of the surrogacy i am asking some basic questions also as lot of gynecologists are joined from india also and apart from india also so these are the some basic queries also what i have got so i want to first you enlighten us that how many types of surrogacy and which one is valid now yeah 
There are two kinds of surrogacy. One is called as altruistic. One is called as commercial, and there is another one which is called as compensated. So basically, three types which are based on the amount of compensation that the surrogate mother gets. Altruistic was defined by the Supreme Court of India, where the surrogate mother doesn't get a financial compensation. However, she only gets the um, reimbursement of her medical expenses. Compensated surrogacy was defined as reimbursement of medical expenses, but also loss of wages, loss. of income if there is loss of a husband's income at the same time because he has to look after the children that is compensated and commercial means over and above this she will get some more financial reward for uh, the time and the effort and whatever she is doing now in india what we are doing is like a compensation so it is called as commercial but you can also call as a compensated surrogacy where the surrogate mother is being compensated for the time and effort that she is putting through there is also uh, surrogacy can be defined as traditional or gestational traditional means that it is an iui through which the surrogate mother's own egg is used and gestational where a donor's egg means a biological mother is somebody else not the surrogate mother in india it is very clear that we are only going to use traditional surrogacy we are not allowed sorry we are only using um, gestational gestational we are not yeah. allowed to use traditional surrogacy okay and so currently you know. wanted to know the status Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What has happened is that in 2016, the surrogacy bill came out and it was introduced in the Lok Sabha. However, uh, it did not get passed and it was sent to a parliamentary standing committee. I have actually gone in front of that parliamentary standing committee. We had over 30 members of parliament who were there in the Rajya from the Rajya Sabha and they were from all the political parties. and uh, we had to give a presentation over there i presented the data of over 1000 surrogate pregnancies and i must thank all the centers in india which helped and which contributed to that large study because over there uh, the impression was that all ivf is surrogacy you know the impression was that ivf means surrogacy so the first thing okay. was to uh-huh. make people understand that ivf doesn't mean surrogacy ivf is separate ivf is the process how which surrogacy is achieved So then, after that, we presented the data. One thousand people as to why women are opting for surrogacy, and in fact, thirty percent of the cases were failed implantation, age over forty, which is what we are discussing today. So then, after that, the surrogacy bill did not go any further. Now, in twenty twenty. 19 again the surrogacy bill came and it was passed by the lok sabha it did not get passed by the rajya sabha again it was referred to standing committee there is a provision where if the bill doesn't get passed for 6 months it is considered to be lapsed so technically this bill has lapsed however we do not know it might be you know health bills are passed in 90 seconds it is said so we don't know maybe it might be introduced in the lok sabha again because again there are certain modifications right now the surrogacy bill is not Past. That is the bottom line. So currently, what to do if the patients approaching to us? Because you can only guide all of us better. So currently, if the patients are approaching us, that ma'am, we want to go for the surrogacy. So what to do? What will be the correct procedure? Currently, procedures? you must open www. istmr. net. When all provisions under which surrogacy is done, the bill is not passed. So it is again going back to our old previous provisions under which we are doing surrogacy. so we are allowed to compensate the surrogate mother it can be somebody unrelated it can be somebody related also that is also not barred so you can okay. continue to practice surrogacy in the same way however foreigner surrogacy is barred yes 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 yeah thank you so much dr shivani dr shivani i want to know as our topic is this fertility after 40 so sometimes we need for this donor egg so what are the criteria for this donor egg for what are the criteria yeah. for the, yeah So for donor egg again, ICMR has laid down guidelines, and there is this form which is called as the M form, which has to be filled M one and M two. And uh, the criteria for an egg donor is age between twenty one to thirty five, and she has to be free from any sexually disease, transmitted disease, HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, medically fit. They've written a complete basic panel of investigations oh. which has to be done. It has to be unrelated, anonymous. There can there can be no contact between the parent and between the donor. You can provide characteristics like the face features, the height, the hair color, the profession, and certain other features can be given. And the donor uh, has to be taken from an ART bank, so the clinic cannot directly go and approach a woman and say you should be an egg donor. There has to be an ART bank which has to sign a contract 
with the egg donor and also has to sign a contract with the clinic along with that the egg donor has to receive a particular compensation which can be mutually decided which we mentioned in your contract and also um, there are uh, requirements for the egg donors uh, records to be stored for at least 10 years in the clinic or in the art bank and ideally after 10 years they are supposed to be submitted to the icmr right now we are not able to submit to the icmr so the records have to be stored like permanently i mean for 18 years 25 years we cannot delete any records means so we can uh, means store in uh, on this our laptop or the hard copy also we have to keep with us that is not mentioned it just says okay. i mean i have the guidelines i printed it it just says that the records have okay. to be stored. okay okay because it's a very tedious job now to keep it for i can imagine it well i mean literally yeah. i'm telling you i'm paying rent because i don't have space to store so we have uh-huh. taken a place where we are just paying rent just to keep the records where to Record. submit them we don't know True, true, true. Also, similarly, Dr. Shivani, please guide us. What are the guidelines for this donor semen criteria? What are the guidelines for this? So, for the donor semen, the medical criteria are similar to that of the egg donor. The age group also, like it keeps changing. I mean, earlier it was even up to forty-five. Now it has become thirty-five. And the maximum number of pregnancies which are allowed is ten. The maximum number of times the semen donation is. earlier it was 75 now the criteria is changing so this is in an area of flux right now but right now uh, uh, it is similar to that of the egg donor true yeah thank you so much dr shivani now as we are discussing today this fertility after 40 so i think it is very important after if doing all those uh, this either naturally or art if the patient becomes pregnant at the age of the 41 42 so what will be the risk associated with the pregnancy at this age so at this the uh, the risk can be associated with the age of the woman so there is a baseline risk of diabetes high blood pressure and uh, or it can be associated uh, with uh, fertility at this age which is the risk of preeclampsia preterm babies low birth weight babies higher incidence of cesarean section and it is generally said that the problems like endometriosis polyp formation fibroids um ovarian cysts are more prevalent after the age of 40 so this can give a baseline higher risk of complications even for the fertility treatment itself yeah yeah thank you so much dr shivani one more uh, important question sometimes when the couple approaches us at the age of the 40 41 suppose if we counsel them for the ivf or icsi if the patients are ready also so in sometimes the patient asks us the query ki can you do the embryo biopsy for the genetic testing so is it routinely allowed in our india or in what cases we have can go ahead what are the criteria little bit enlighten us about for that oh absolutely if you see we have to fill the form f for every embryo biopsy so if you yeah. see the form f it just lists maternal age about 35 so uh, that is a valid criteria for doing genetic testing the other criteria is say if there is a history of genetic illness in the family but age by itself is a valid criteria previous failed treatments previous history of maybe any anomaly in the child or in the family is also a criteria age by self can be used yeah i think uh, we have covered almost most of the point for this uh, the fertility after 40 and we have very much on the time the time show is half an hour i think very much so thank you dr shivani yeah most uh, welcome Shankar, there was uh, one thing which i wanted to just uh, point out just as a last leaving yeah. word so you know yeah, yeah. our objective about 40 is fourfold one is that we have yeah. to prevent fertility problems we have to counsel people there is fertility preservation if you are happy go lucky you want to focus on your career but you know in your heart that you want children at some point in your life please consider fertility preservation and this should be part of education of girls between the age of 20 25 so that they know you know facebook google apple they are giving incentive i mean they are paying actually the fertility insurance cost for their employees who want to have children after the age of 40 so at the age of 30 you can fertilize freeze your eggs next is we must compensate so what is prevent compensate solve and reduce 
prevention, fertility, preservation. To raise awareness, people think, oh, I'm so fit, I'm so healthy, I look so young. But that doesn't mean that is your oocytes. The oocytes will age. The next thing is to compensate. So what we must do is that we have to maximize the ovarian stimulation, get the best quality of eggs, give all the possible supplements. To solve this problem, there are newer techniques. Like we have uh, stem cells. We have the option of even doing oocyte donation and to reduce Reduce any problems will mean like embryo selection, doing pre-implantation, genetic testing, and monitoring for a very high-risk pregnancy. So the fourfold purpose, fertility after 40, should be followed. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much, Dr. Shivani, for enlightening us. Uh, Bebo, are, are we having any questions on the Facebook or we can wind up the session? Because I'm not able to see the questions here. Bebo, if any question, can you please copy, paste, and post here? We can wait for one or two minutes, Dr. Shivani, if there are any yes, questions that will come here. Yeah. Thank you so much for sparing your valuable time with us, Dr. Shivani. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ben. And thank you, Vaibha, and the whole team. You know, I'm so grateful for getting this wonderful opportunity to be on your show. It is such a very, very popular show. And I've seen the previous uh, sessions also. They have been so informative. It just stays in your mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor, uh, for enlightening on this topic. And uh, we have a product range in this uh, scope uh, for a male infertility. We have a UB10LC brand, which is a coenzyme Q10, uh, along with the combination of lycopene, astaxanthin, selenium, and zinc. So we have that product. Again, we have high strength of coenzyme Q10, that is 300 milligram, 40 x 300. So we have both the uh, ranges are available for treating male infertility as well as. You know, taking care of that uh, sperm parameters, sperm health, and more of sperm morphology. So, Doctor, thank you so much again. It was a really yeah. uh, eye-opening session, and you know, uh, most of the doctors have participated. And all are actually, uh, you know, uh, very much thankful to both of you. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thank so you. Friends, be yeah. friends, before we wind up, so tomorrow again our next Pundit, in the series of the Pundit show, tomorrow we are having also a very interesting topic with uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, a very catchy topic, sex in the metro city. So to do join us at 9.30. So Dr. Shivani, before I wind up, so there are two lines I want to say for you. Please listen it carefully, Dr. Shivani. Dr. Shivani is actually a very, very dear friend of mine. So these two lines are dedicated to you. True friends are not those who will make who make your problems disappear. Dr. Shivani, are you listening to me? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yes, yes. So true friends are not the ones who make your problems disappear. They are the ones who won't disappear when you are facing the problem. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So thank you to all of my dear friends. Thank you again to Sankal, Harish, Mr. Dipen and Innovacare. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night.